Hello, I'm Jimmy Famarewa, Chief Restaurant Critic at the Evening Standard, and I'm delighted to be joined today by top chef and restaurateur, Angela Hartnett. Uh, one of Britain's best love chefs, Angela is known for her simple but sophisticated Italian-style cooking, inspired by growing up with an Italian grandmother. So she's one of the people that actually learnt at the shoulder of her nonna. Um, Angela began her career in the kitchens at Aubergine, Zaffirano and Petrus, where she became head chef in just seven months, before going on to launch Amaryllis in Scotland. There in Dubai, menu and the grill room at the Connaught with Gordon Ramsay. Uh, in 2008, she opened her own restaurant, Murano in Mayfair, where she is chef proprietor and holds a Michelin star. Uh, she is also the author of two cookbooks and has an MBE for services to the hospitality industry. And uh, despite a turbulent year for restaurant businesses, in 2020, Angela turned her talents to a good cause. Um, when Britain locked down last March, she teamed up with her friend Lulu Dillon to set up a non-profit called Cook19, which uh, enlisted chefs and volunteers to cook and deliver meals to NHS workers across the capital. Uh, Cook19, at its height, uh, was delivering 1,000 meals to NHS workers every day. Um, Angela, <laughs> there's your, this is your life intro. I know, it should be your red book. As <laughs> I you know, said. it really Fantastic. should. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for joining me. It's no, lovely pleasure. to have you Thank here. you for asking me. Um, I always feel when I'm kind of in conversation with chefs at the moment after the year we've had that it's almost, it can turn into a bit of a therapy session, a mutual, <laughs> a mutual therapy session for those of us that write about restaurants and those of us that work in them and even those of us that just love them. Um, what has the year been like for you? What has your experience of it been and how have you coped? Yeah, it's been, well, as you say, everyone's experienced it in different ways. Mm. We've all had different experiences. And um, one thing, I was out, finally, out to dinner last night, oh, sitting fantastic. outside and talking to two other friends and both of us said, you know, we've worked pretty much all of the lockdown. Yeah. You know, yeah. as you said, we did Cook 19 in the first lockdown, mm. then lockdown two, I started doing takeaway mm. and then lockdown three it's been about pre-opening up and more table so i've pretty much been working full yeah. on not full on services yeah, but yeah. so it hasn't felt like i've been i've, I've been quite lucky in that respect mm. i think because i think a lot of people have been self-isolating locked in doors not going out yeah. so i pretty much i think have been out all the time so it's been a, a horrible experience in the sense that you you feel very what's happening next trepidation mm, mm. is everything going to come back to normal i feel i'm quite a positive person i'm yeah. very much that cup's half full we're <laughs> over the worst vaccination yeah. is killing it yeah, and let's yeah. just you know and now it's like open up do it safely do it smartly yeah and uh, show respect for everyone else and you know my sort of mantra to all my team is you know treat everyone as they want to be you know everyone's had a different experience yes, you might yeah. have had it from me yeah, yeah, some yeah. people feel confident to come out some people don't see so mm. you can't suddenly go well come on let's just get on with it if yeah. someone's very nervous and haven't been out before yeah, so completely. and i think with the team as well that's been a real shock because some of them have really struggled to come back to work i think that's been a, my big sort of priority now is making sure everyone feels safe coming mm. back to work mm. they feel they can travel safely and then when they're going home to their family and friends they're in safe environments so i think that's that's the key now yeah, i think yeah. the mental challenges that yeah. have surfaced because of covid that, that's interesting that you didn't really stop and you yeah. kind of kept yourself busy i think a lot mm. of chefs did that and mm. poured themselves into other projects yeah. and pivoted yeah. um were, were there any moments of down time um, mm. in terms of cooking at home what did it do to your relationship to food I've, we've seen reports of all sorts of people talking about getting bored of their own cooking yeah, yeah, or yeah. you know meal times becoming a bit burdensome and not yeah, this kind sure. of joyous break in the day did you experience that or? Um, I mean I'm quite lucky my husband's a chef yes, uh, a is. friend of ours yeah, very is, good um, chef he lives with us. There. He's a good cook as well. Although I have to say, Salvatore really has not cooked anything in this lockdown. <laughs> I shall make that point. So Neil and I would take it in turns. Yeah. Um, we were fortunate enough to get friends deliver restaurant boxes. Yeah, but yeah. I actually do sympathise that. And it probably sounds so awful to say. Mm. But towards the end of this lockdown, I've been like, oh, my God, what are we going to have for supper? <laughs> you know, and that's a what terrible... Have you gone, yeah. What have you gone for? And what, to be honest, you end up backs? having a bowl of pasta <laughs> or chicken um, schnitzel. I mean, that's... That yeah. is my all-time salad and you know chicken yeah. breadcrumb fried in a pan, and I just think, come on, Angela, put you, put your mind to it, focus <laughs> a bit here. But it, you know, I, I sympathise with 
parents or families yes. at every night of cooking because it's quite yeah. a lot to be imaginative and yeah, really yeah, keep it going yeah. for everyone, you know. Yeah, and for every meal to sort of miss that um, yeah. that place that um, restaurants took up in our mm. lives. Um, you mentioned Cook 19 there. Yeah. Um, what was the kind of thinking behind launching that and the impetus? Was it that... Uh, you know, the situation with the NHS, was it mm. multiple things? Was it kind of not being able to be idle and wanting to be busy? Like, yeah, what, I mean, what were the conversations that kind I think of friend, I mean, Lulu Dillon is a really dear friend of mine. Mm. Um, she's very much a get up and go, mm. get things sort of done, works in the mu movie business, you know, really is a very proactive PA for a lot of big stars and stuff. And so suddenly she was just sitting at home with her dad, like, oh God, I've moved back home at the age of, you know, 28. <laughs> Something and she a lot of people a, can yeah, probably relate yeah, to. Yeah, exactly. She had quite a few friends that were doctors and nurses mm. and she'd sort of said, oh, come over for dinner. And this was right at the beginning when no one knew what was going mm. on. And they were saying to her, well, actually, Lily, we don't think we can because, you know, this is quite bad and mm. quite contagious. Mm. So she said, well, let me drop some food to you. Yeah. So that's what she did. And then she realised how hard they were working. She would go to Sainsbury's, buy them these food boxes and take them food. And I saw and I spoke to her sister and she said, you know, Lulu's doing this. And I was bored at home. Mm. So I sort of said, come on, I'll help you. Let's do this together. <laughs> and it evolved from there. Yeah, and what we yeah. realised is, poor Mike, Mr Dylan, we love you. Her dad could not <laughs> drive from West London to East London every day picking up food and being delivery. So we basically got Smart Hospitality involved here in Bermondsey. Then Hawksmoor got involved, Hacker got involved, mm. Derby's got involved, and everyone was doing their bit. So yeah. Hawksmoor had a remote kitchen where Hacker did, yeah. we were doing. Because, again, it's easy to go, yeah, we can do that, but you didn't want 20 chefs in one mm. unit. So mm. I would cook two days a week, Smart Guys another two days a week, the Murano Guys another two days. Yeah. So you cooked in your bubble yeah, yeah. and you had to be really safe. But as you kindly said, we, we were getting up to 1,000 meals That's a day. Incredible. And, and then yeah. Lulu devised it that we were going to Charing Hospital Cross hospital, different hospitals to their ICU units, and then we were also doing care packages to doctors or nurses and anyone in the NHS yeah, who was yeah. um, self-isolating, who couldn't get out. Yes, to the shops. of course, yeah, because that's a really so, that's a really important part yeah. of it. There were so many people that mm. were on their own for various exactly, reasons, yeah. and that time when just getting produce oh, was God. so difficult yeah, and yeah, it was yeah. really scary. Yeah. Um, what was the feedback from NHS workers and stuff? Were there things you learnt about, OK, that's not going to work, things mm. that you learnt about what kind of food to go for, what kind of meals work best, which things did people respond to? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think we learnt earlier on just keep it smart, you know, mm. um, just make sure there's a veggie option, yeah. make sure there's a meat option. Then what we had was great shops like Fortnum's, yes, you know, come yeah, Easter, wow. gave us a 5,000, you know, five, you know 500, 500 Easter eggs that yes. we could distribute. We had so many suppliers ring up going, actually, you know what, we've got all this in our freezer, it's, you know, 20, 30 kilos of beef, it's going to be out by its date, can mm. you use it? So we were really lucky to have that sort of network. And then to have loads of treats, again, around Easter time last year, we got loads of hot cross buns donated. Oh, yeah, so of course. all yeah, this yeah, sort yeah. of thing was really nice. And what they just wanted was a really hot meal that they could sort of ping in a microwave or heat up, and then little extra treats were mm. a, a real luxury yeah. and stuff like that. So it was going to be me and my sort of mad capacity were like, you know, <laughs> we were putting stuff in plastic containers. I was going, oh, I'm not so sure me about this plastic. You know, we should get it back and wash them. And Lulu's like, we're sending them to a COVID unit, Angela, with a very contagious disease. And you don't want to transport that. I said, yeah, good point, Lulu. Good point. Well, you know, so all these sort of things. It shows like, we yeah. were all figuring it yeah, out, yeah, weren't yeah, we? And exactly, it's kind of, um, yeah. we feel like we're veterans now. Yeah. But even so, there's all these fresh problems that have been of thrown course, up. Of course, of um, course. Obviously, in the background to all this was that your restaurants mm. um, had to close. Yeah. Um, what can you remember about when that decision became inevitable and mm. when kind of lockdown was definitely going to happen? A lot of, a lot of um, uh, hospitality kind of business owners and restaurateurs took it upon themselves, kind of, and shut mm. before. And it was a, yeah. it was a scary, confusing mm. time. It wasn't sure what the best course of action was. Yeah, sure. What are your memories of that time and the kind of? When, when it dawned, mm. and you know, of course, this was before furlough had yeah. been confirmed in any way. What, mm. How did you cope? You, you mean, say you're a glass half full person. I imagine well, it, that tested yeah, it. it. It was really, um, it was quite odd because we just. Um, come back from Jordan, actually. I've right. been doing a trek there for uh, 10 days. Wow. So we sort of, and I remember vividly on the coach going back to the airport and you had, a, because we were walking every day, it was a big trek, we had a doctor with us. And I sort of said, oh, 
God, I've got all this sanitizer and stuff left. Here, keep it for the next trip. <laughs> yeah. And the doctor, Helen, said to me, no, Angie, you better keep that sanitizer because it's selling out in the right, UK. Right, right, wow. And it was, we were oblivious because mm. we had no phone signals. Then you got back, you realised what was happening. Mm. A week later, it was the Tuesday, I remember, wasn't it? The, the Prime Minister yes. stood up and said, don't go to theatres, don't yeah. go to restaurants, don't go to bars. And the bookings just <sighs> nosedive. Right, yeah. Because we had basically, on the Monday, decided, OK, we're going to see how it goes. Let's see if we can stay open for a week. Mm. Maybe we close two of the cafes, keep Murano open, yeah. Yeah. blah, blah, blah. And we'd sent out an uh, uh, email to all the customers saying, oh, we're to remain open on Sunday. Amazingly, we got a bit of abuse from a few customers saying, how can you do that? How can you put your staff at risk? How can you? Right. We, it was like, oh, well, hold on a minute. We, yeah. You know, because no one was yeah. quite sure. It was sure. quite an inflamed time as yeah, well. It was. There was a I lot think... of opinion and people were kind of online reading things. Exactly. And, yeah, stuck and scared. And, yeah. and I think it made people quite nervous. And mm. I think, you know, it was, you know, he said it on that Tuesday. Bookings, I've, we thought we'd stay. And I literally remember the Wednesday night. No, I remember there on the Tuesday afternoon having said, should we have a glass of wine? And then we said, should we just close to it? It's just, what, what's the point? Yeah. And then so we closed, we called a staff meeting and then we said, to, we advised everyone. And that's where I think you've really got to, I think what it shows is real trust with your partnership and your business mm. partners. So Chris is my CEO, Graf is the FD. And Chris was the one who said, you know what? We don't make anyone redundant. We put everyone on unpaid leave, mm. they can take holiday, and let's just see, let's just play it out for the yeah. next few days yeah. and see what Wait happens. It out. Yeah. And it was great advice to everyone. Mm. You see, I would not have known how to react. <laughs> I would have been like, what yeah. the hell? Yeah. But he was so smart to say that because then within a week, the furlough kicked in yeah. and yeah. then all their jobs were saved. You know, we didn't have to get rid of anyone at that stage. And, you know, and it was like brilliant. You know, yeah. that's, that's great news. Yeah, yeah completely. Yeah. And then um, you've touched on it a little bit, but the pivots and yeah. the way in which restaurants adapted and showed kind of real resilience mm. and creativity mm. not just in helping NHS workers yeah. and feeding people and campaigning around sure. school meals yeah. and things like that there was real galvanization yeah. of kind of mm. um, of of the restaurant industry and hospitality um, what do you, what do you make of the kind of the the future of meal kits and deliveries and I know that you did takeaway and you've done mm. boxes and stuff I've, I've spoken to some chefs that are kind of quite open about they they can't wait to see the back of them <laughs> um, which you know uh, then some people are saying there's definitely a future for this yeah. and obviously what it allows you to do as a less as a London restaurant yeah. nationally uh, mm. what are your thoughts your um, candid I think, thoughts I mean there's part of me that thinks I personally are really Bit glad to see the back of them yeah. because I've had enough of doing them. Yes, yeah. But I absolutely know from a business point of view, we are going to carry them yeah. on. We are looking at facilities of how to do it because you've just absolutely said it there. Um, as a London restaurant, mm. being able to go national. Mm. And because I still think, even though we're opening up, there's still going to be not everyone's going to be out yeah. and about. We still yeah. don't have the tourists back, the flights and all the rest of it. Mm. We need to make sure there's another sort of arm to our business. And if that's restaurant boxes and takeaways, that's what we'll do. So mm. at the moment, we're figuring it out. We will do something, yeah. probably from the cafes. Um, and then, yeah, let's see. But I think there's definitely a market. Because mm. even I myself, as a chef who has the access to go to restaurants, do go online looking and think, oh, yeah, I really fancy that. Have you tried? Have, oh, did, yeah. Are there any, I mean, which I ones, any favourites? Because you know, it kind of tends to be that some things work better than others, maybe, in different cuisines. Definitely, cuisines. I think a lot of, like, Indian food or mm. Asian food works mm. brilliantly. We've had some amazing sushi come through. Mm. Um, I'm desperate to try the Marksman, if you're watching, John. Mm. And <laughs> just send me a box of the That's Marksman. That's the only know. reason we did this, to be honest, just <laughs> to get the message out. Who do you want, John Ferguson's Yeah, yeah, yeah. Castle, I, should, know, yeah so. I should mention a few, actually. Yeah. Um, you know, there's some few that I think, God, I really want it. So I just, you know, I'm going to go and like yeah. Somsa, you know, I'm not a great, but you know, when you fancy, oh God, yeah, and you can just mm. order that box. I think it's great to yeah. do that. Yeah. No, I think you're right. I think there, there will be a future yeah. for it. Mm. Um, and uh, we've touched on furlough and how beneficial that is, but we've also talked about um, the lack of tourists mm. and rent and mm. these other problems that aren't really going away. Yeah. Um, obviously, reopening is very exciting and mm. things are going as, as we hope. Um, how do you feel 
about the kind of government support and mm. communication and how you know some people have been quite vociferous in their mm. you know criticism of, mm. of of the government some people have said you know all, you know furlough is seen as this kind of thing mm. that saved so many restaurants yeah. how do you kind of how do you kind of um, I suppose weigh I'm it a up? bit I mean right at the beginning it was all you know damn them and what are mm. they doing they don't know and actually they didn't know what they did yeah. let's yeah. be honest you know what government really yeah, did you know yeah. unless you went new zealand style which let's be honest is so many less people in that country yeah. than there are yeah. i don't know yeah. this you know they shut the borders easy for them to do you know we are a economic cultural hub mm. of the world one of mm. the biggest capital cities you know from that respect so you know i think now they've found their foot in they know where they're going i think you know Whatever you think about Boris, he took a punt on the vaccine and it's paid off. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, brilliant the way the NHS have rolled it out. It's yeah, incredible yeah, it's when you incredible. look at how America are doing it, which is all money based and mm. who you know and what you know. Whereas this, I think, has been really brilliantly done. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think now British in a, system of queuing. Yeah, I think, it's I very think good. that's no, been no, really it's good. True. And um, now I think it's up to us to sort of say, you know, I'm I'm bored with slagging them off. If I'm absolutely yeah. honest, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I don't want to. I want to move yeah. forward now do our bit to make sure. One thing I want them to understand, the government, is that we can really help revitalise mm. the econ economy and cities. Because I think the countryside is up there. The countryside, all the hotels, mm. I work with Limewood Group, yeah. they are packed all Christmas. Yeah, yeah, They're doing yeah. hundreds of covers a day, whereas yeah. the cities really need it. So mm. they need to sort out the, you know, getting tourists back. They need to sort out what they're doing about flights. Yeah. I think whoever becomes mayor in the next two weeks has to stop the £15 congestion. Yeah. And I would say Westminster Council keep now outside seating as a permanent thing. Yeah, I genuinely think Would London's that be one transformed thing that, yeah, because yeah, of definitely, that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I think you know, COVID's not going away. We're mm, stuck with it, mm. whether it's booster tablets, whatever we have to go. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Do we what every year have to apply for another license? <laughs> do this, you know, just. Do it. Yeah. Just make it part of people's lives. Is, that, is that something that would help you as a kind of as somebody that runs restaurants, mm. like just making it easier, like the Definitely, process? Definitely, yeah. And, and mm. I'm not suggesting that every footpath in the whole of mm. the, you know, the city has to be pedestrianised, but I certainly think they can really look at it and actually make some get the people in the restaurant industry talking. I think that was their big mistake at the beginning of the government. Mm. They just made the decisions yeah. on the hoof. Yeah. But now I think they have listened. They've got brilliant people like Will from Hawksmoor they talk to, Robin from Lyme Group, you know, loads of people. Yeah, yeah. You know, Asma Khan's always yeah. there. You know, she's really fighting the cause. So talk to people who know what they're talking about and mm. listen to some advice about it is what yeah, would be my yeah. suggestion. Um, and uh, you, along with Tom Kerridge mm. and kind of other leading chefs, were yeah. really lobbying for a minister for hospitality. Yeah. Yeah. What's the status of that now and kind of why... I imagine that you think that's still important, even yeah. though, you know, as we go forward, even though, you know, um, there is the phased reopening and sure. you have the roadmap. Um, yeah, what, yeah, what was the kind of... I think the impetus was behind it is that what, what people found out is that, you know, if you're one sector restaurants, you mm. sat under one ministerial mm. body and then hotels will sit on another and right. effectively you're all one group. Then yeah. tourism was one and something else. So I think it was quite important that everyone felt we were all under one group mm. because, you know, things like then the 10 p.m. rule yeah, yeah. would not have happened because it was pure stupidity. Yeah, and you sort of yeah. think someone's not talking to someone here. Someone yeah. needs to, there needs to be a collective. Yeah. Now we, you know, lots of people like we've had different Lords advise. They said, you won't get it straight away. You've got to mm. keep the pressure okay, on. You may get a minister underneath like the second tier and then just keep pushing but keep don't give up don't mm. stop you know boris knows about it you know rishi sunak knows about it and we just have to keep the pressure on mm. i'm very much of look we've made our point it was over you know a quarter of a million people signed yeah. the petition let's get open let's support the economy mm. and then come back in six months time and say okay right now where are we yeah what are you going to do this is what we've done let's keep fighting this cause yeah completely um uh i was just thinking as well, like obviously now we have reopened. Mm. Um, where where have you been? Like where have you kind of booked? You mentioned oh. that you went somewhere. So like, I went the to the places? Rosewood Hotel last night, oh, which lovely. is very nice. I was invited by a friend. Mm. Um, I've never had Callum's pies before, oh, yes. so it was really yeah, lovely. Yeah, yeah. So I had a great chicken pie last night. Oh, so fantastic. I've been there, and, and, and they've done Franklin, it really is, nicely. Yeah. I don't know if you go you go into the, which would necessarily be their courtyard, but mm. they've you know. 
carpeted, wrong word, grassed it over, <laughs> lovely heaters, blankets. I mean, to the point I was sitting there going, oh my God, is that hot, is that hot? <laughs> Roasting under yeah, those exactly. grills, yeah. And then I uh, went to Rochelle Canteen, which was great. Yeah. Um, and then hopefully this, I think tomorrow night, I'm, hopefully I think Quo Vardis or is it Barafina in Soho. I'd like to maybe hit Soho tomorrow yeah, night, let's yeah. see. But it's great to go out. It's just a lovely yeah. feeling, isn't it? Yeah. Have I you mean, been anywhere? I have, of yeah. course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Course. I've been um, I've been I've been on the case. Yeah, um, I bet. Rochelle Canteen was oh, nice. absolutely oh, yeah, magical. I read that. Yeah, that was yeah, great. yeah, it was very yeah. good. Thank yeah. you. Um, what are the other things that you feel are still kind of issues that need resolving? I mentioned rent there mm. and I know that it is you talk to a lot of people in the hospitality yeah. industry and mm. from my point of view looking at you know what chefs like you have done and owners like you have done I feel like sometimes the resilience and the creativity mm. and the ability to pivot has kind of covered mm. the need for like real help it's kind of mm. like and I think you know diners and customers have done it as well you mentioned yeah. the 10 p.m. curfew yeah. substantial meal people were still yeah. you know jumping through these ridiculous hoops <laughs> in order to meet up with each other yeah, yeah. what are the things that you think would be beneficial what are the things you need to see imagine if you know yeah. Nothing is too radical. What Nothing's would you like too in terms radical. of in well, terms one, of health? I would definitely, as I said, like a lot more pedestrianisation yeah. and outdoor seating. I think would be great. Mm. I think they need to do something about all the cars and stuff coming into town to make that happen. Yeah. You know, when the Olympics happen, we restricted deliveries. I think mm. they should bring that in again. Mm. They keep talking about climate change and all the rest yeah. of it. Yeah. But I don't see them doing much about it. I think there should definitely be some sort of rent moratorium that does allow the smaller businesses, you know, to open up within six months, 12 months without having to fork out for rent straight yeah, away. Yeah. I think I think some of the bigger players can do it, mm. you know, and I think, you know, we've been lucky with our landlords, but, mm. you know, there's one or two that are now have sort of said, you know what, we're going to let you off for the next three months. Yeah, and that yeah. just helps you in those first phase yeah. of opening up. You yeah. don't suddenly have to dig in. You know, like last week, we made money. Mm. Now, admittedly, like, great. But as Chris points <laughs> out, we're not paying rent. We're not, you know. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, you're sort of yeah. going to need that six to 12 months to build your coffers up in a way. Yeah, your coffers are, yeah. So that you can get you through those sort of bad months. So anything, and I think the big thing for London is get tourism back. Mm. Open up. Not... I don't know whether it is open up the badders or incentivise people to, you know, I mm. would say, you know, make parking free in London on yeah, a Saturday, yeah, yeah. do something like yeah, that, yeah, I haven't yeah. just said don't bring cars in, but you know what I mean, <laughs> you know, do something radical like that or, you know, give, you know, museums or, or, or you know, theatres, you yeah. know, tickets for £10 yeah, for a yeah, week yeah, yeah, yeah. and subsidise them yeah. to get people into these places so that people come into the city, because we all connect and, you know, we, we talk about restaurants, but what about the, the dry cleaners, the coffee shop, mm. the, the news agents, all those small little shops that you see around the s railway stations, they've all suffered. Yeah. And they need commuters. And the best thing they could do is incentivize people to get back to actual work in offices. Yeah. You know, yeah. and if they, a friend of mine came up with it and I thought, God, you don't know what you're talking about. Actually, <laughs> I thought it was a great idea. He said, just make rail fares two pounds. Yeah. You know, yeah, for, yeah. For, you know it is radical, yeah. but just yeah. so. Because a lot of people now at home who have worked from home sort of think how much I've saved on rail fares. And if mm. you actually said, you know what, for the next six months it's either free or something yeah, yeah. just to get people yeah. back in. No, no, you mean I like think. smart incentivisation yeah. without it being you know, yeah. a crazy opening of the floodgates. Yeah. Poor Rishi, has got no more money. Where's he digging for this money? <laughs> <laughs> Those money trees, plant yes, a few exactly. more. Um, and just absolutely finally, mm. what have you kind of learnt about, what new things have you learnt about restaurants, about mm. food, about mm. yourself? during this time I imagine it must have shifted some things or yeah. given you some revelations what are some of the biggest things um, I think um, I think one of the big big things I think one um, we can be proud as a hospitality industry mm. I think we've held our head high yeah and I think we've done some incredible things during the COVID times I think what has probably really helped us is that a lot of employers have really focused in on the mental awareness of their employees. Mm, mm. I think they've, to get to realise that to come through this, they need their teams. Yeah. I think much more support is going towards, you know, your day to day chef and waiter and everyone, yeah, yeah, yeah. which I think is a great thing. And I also think everyone's engaged more with politics. Mm. I think we've really suffered as a country of having real 
apathy when it comes to politicians for various reasons. Yeah, yeah. You know, we don't have time to talk about it. But I would like to think out of this that we are now a bit more politicised as a, mm. as a uh, I say useful, I'm the other <laughs> side of 50, but the people I employ are in their 20s, 30s, who yeah, engage more, yeah. and I think that's a good thing. Yeah. And I suppose finally, which is very close to my heart, people are cooking at home as families. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I was brought up, you mentioned my nonna, we had every meal together as a yeah. family. We never had TV dinners. We were very, very lucky and fortunate. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the fact that people have had to do that, I hope that carries on. Because yeah. I think that's so important for that sort of, you know, I don't know, just love of each other. Mm. And, you know, to chat. I mean, the thing is, in lockdown, there's nothing to say because you can do anything. <laughs> but at least now, if you at least have two meals together a day, how was your week? What did yeah, you do? Yeah, I think yeah. it's great, that sort of yeah, interaction. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Honing in on those kind yeah. of simple places. Did you do your homework? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, don't. Yeah. Homeschooling flashbacks. Um, Angela Hartnett, thank you so much. No, Absolutely thank you. That. It's been really uh, great chatting to you. Yeah, it was really great Sorry, I think I talked too much. No, no, away. no, never. Yeah. <laughs>